Guys, welcome back to the channel. I'm Matt Wilson, this is CRD. And today, today I thought it'd be quite interesting to go back to the basics. You see, when, when you're first getting started in this world of, of raw denim, or of, of salvage denim, there's a few, a few key terms that you're gonna come across just again and again. So I thought it'd be interesting to go over five of these, discover where the terms came from, and what they mean in terms of your genes. So I thought we'd start with selvage. What exactly is selvage? Well, this is selvage. This, on, focus. This is selvage. It's this tightly woven edge that runs down the outer seam of, well, selvage jeans. It's actually a combination of, of two words. Focus. It's a combination of two words, self and edge. And it refers to the way that the denim's been woven. Selvage denim is made on a type of loom called a, a shuttle loom. And these shuttle looms have a mechanism called a shuttle. And this shuttle zips backwards and forwards between either side of the loom. And that's the way that, that, the, that the yarns are passed backwards and forwards to create the denim fabric. And since it is one continuous thread or yarn that's being passed backwards and forwards, that actually the edges of this, this strip of fabric, the edges of the denim fabric, by just this process, they, they seal themselves, creating this self-edge, selvage, selvage denim. Now this selvage band that runs down the outside of the fabric, this is called the selvage ID. And it can actually be any color that the, that the mill or the brand desires. Uh, in, in this case, it's, it's white. Um, the most common you're gonna find though is this white with a red line running down the middle, which I've got an example of. Ugh here and rather unimaginatively this is called red line selvage and that is possibly the most common that you're going to find. That selvage ID is used or at least back in the day it was used to differentiate between different types of fabric. Say imagine very hypothetically that you've got 50 rolls of fabric lying on a factory floor. The one with the, the red line selvage that's going to be to make Levi's jeans the one with the green line selvage, that's gonna to be to make Lee jeans. Nowadays, it's not actually that simple. Red line selvage is by far the most common that you're gonna find. And if you see a pair of jeans with, with a red line selvage on it, it doesn't necessarily mean that it's a pair of Levi's. Denim heads like to flaunt this by cuffing their jeans, revealing this selvage edge. And you'll see, like back in the days, the pictures of the miners and the farmers wearing their selvage denim, they would do the same thing, but this wasn't a show off. This was to account for all of the jeans being made in, in one single length. This was to make it easier to mass produce. It was to account for folks being different heights. And it was also to deal with the shrink. And the shrink takes us on to our next term, unsamphorized. Unsamphorized denim can also be known as loom state. And I, I, think, I think I actually prefer that term. It seems to be more appropriate. And it's the state of the denim when it comes just directly off the loom. Thing is, when denim's woven, it's prone to all kinds of unpredictable behavior. If you take a, a roll of unsamphorized, of loom state denim, and you use that to, to make a pair of jeans, and then you give those jeans a wash, it's gonna shrink down, it's gonna skew, it's gonna twist. This tendency to shrink was a, a big part of the reasons that the, the jeans were made sort of overly long. It wasn't just to account for the different sizes of people. They had to account for the, the shrink. I mean, otherwise you'd have all these miners after they'd washed their jeans walking around in crop jeans. Maybe a little bit on trend, but not all that practical. These days, this unsamphorized denim, this loom state denim, is really, really popular amongst the, the hardcore denim heads. They, they love this unpredictability. They love the process of shrinking down a pair of jeans. Some even go as far as to, to climb into a bath while they're wearing the jeans, claiming that this is the, the one and only way that you can get a perfectly fitting pair of jeans. In my experience, this is absolute nonsense and rather uncomfortable nonsense as well. Now, yes, unsamphorized denim does need to be shrunk down. It's actually essential for the health of the fabric. 
You see, during the weaving process, the fibers are they're put under quite a lot of stress, quite a lot of tension. And these poor little guys, they need a drink of water to return to their, their, their normal state, to, to chill the fuck out a little bit. And when you put the water in, like the, the fibers, they shrink back up to their, their normal size and they bind together better. And that's why you do get this, this skewing, this shrinking, this unpredictability, the, the texture within the denim. But certainly you don't have to do this by, by climbing into a bath full of hot water, as I said. You can simply do this by just throwing the jeans into a warm bath. I actually did this to my, to my Levi's 1890s. Um, I'll put a link to that up in the corner somewhere. The problem with all this twisting and shrinking, as I found out with that pair of Levi's, is that, well, say you go to the store, you buy a pair of jeans that fit you perfectly. You give them a wash when you get home, when they're dirty, and all of a sudden your jeans don't fit you anymore. Hi, Editor Matt here. So when I'm filming, I try to keep things pretty clean, which means deleting unwanted takes. Problem is, I deleted one that I actually wanted. So, what I was doing is I was introducing samphorization. Now, jeans are a mass-produced item, right? And any kind of mass production hates any kind of unpredictability. The stores selling the jeans, they help hate that unpredictability. The consumers buying the jeans, they hate unpredictability. So sometime in the early, in the 30s or so, 1930s, along comes Samford L. Cluet, Cluet? I never actually knew how to pronounce that name. But anyway, along comes Samford and invents a process of predictably shrinking down denim fabric, or indeed probably any kind of fabric. And this process was so good that uh, they named it after him, or maybe he named it after himself, not too sure. Anyway, samphorization. Samphorization is like, it's like therapy for denim. It takes this very unstable fabric and then turns it into a stable fabric. It's this massive industrial machine. These things are, I don't know, 20 meters long, longer. And it has a lot of large metal rollers. It's got a huge rubber belt. It's got a lot of steam pouring out of it and hot air being blasted. The, the denim fabric, the, the loom state denim fabric, the unsamphorized denim fabric is, is fed in one end. Then it, I believe it, it's steamed to, to, to make it wet. And then it is rolled through these series of rollers over a rubber belt. And in that process, the fabrics are allowed to, to shrink down. They're allowed to, to tighten up as it would be with, with just throwing them in the bath. But this is done in a much more controlled manner. And then at the other end, after it's been shrunk down, it gets dried off and rolled back up again. A, a much more stable version of its former self. 99.99999% of denim fabric these days will have gone through samphorization. And I think 99.99999999% of fabrics will have gone through some sort of similar, similar process to, to make them stable. I mean, it, it's just less unpredictability makes for a better product all around. It's better for the stores, it's better for the customers, so it's better for the industry. It's only us slight nuts denim heads that, that loves the unpredictability that comes along with unsamphorized denim. The slub, the texture, the leg twist, the puckering, the roping, all that comes from the, from the denim shrinking up. And I can't say that the unsamphorized denim leads to, to better fades, but I will say that it doesn't hurt. Okay, no smooth transition this time, but this is, this is something I hear folks mixing up all the time. And that is when they use raw denim and selvage denim interchangeably. And this isn't exactly the case. Raw denim is a denim that has not had any pre-wash done to it. While, as we learned earlier, selvage denim refers to the way that the, the denim's been woven. I think folks lump these two terms together because we're so used to seeing selvage denim in its raw state. You know, it's that denim that's you pick it up and it's got that crispy feeling and it's got a deep like inky indigo color and it's got a sort of slight sheen on top of it. Now this can be both samphorized and unsamphorized so it's really it's worth checking that out. I mean it's very important to check that out and up until recently recently the the vast majority of of selvage denim that I did see out there it was worn from raw 
But yeah, recently with brands like, let's see, definitely Orslo um, and Warehouse to a certain extent as well, they've been, they've been making amazing wash down denim. So denim with, with fake fades. They've been making some, some really convincing washes. And so we're seeing more and more people getting into salvage denim, but wash down salvage denim. And okay, to all the, all the raw denim snobs out there, if somebody wants to pick up a pair of Orsos or warehouses with a decent wash in them, listen, all power to them. And with that shift away from this, this purest raw denim comes, comes a, a term that you might have come across reasonably recently because it, it's getting more and more popular and that is one wash denim. This is where a pair of jeans that have been made of, of unsamphorized denim are given a wash by the factory to get, to get all the shrink out of them. This just means that you get all of the, the plus points that the denim heads crave from unsamphorized denim without that element of unpredictability. The brand or the, the factory that's making the jeans, they know how their jeans are gonna shrink down. And that means that, that the stores that are buying these jeans in, they're getting, getting a predictable size run. They know that the waist 33 is going to be a consistent size over that size run. The customer that, that comes in and, and buys a waist 33 that fits them well, they know that they're gonna go home and when it's time to wash their jeans, the jeans are still gonna fit them afterwards. There are a couple of other benefits that go along with the one wash denim as well. For, for, for one thing, you don't have to go through the faff of, of doing the, the shrink down process when you get your unsamphorized jeans. And I'm not a big fan of that, it's just a pain in the ass. And equally with a pair of Samphrise jeans, I always, I always recommend people with a pair of Samphrise jeans to do an initial soak. I've done a video on that before. I'll put a link to that up in the corners. The reason for this is, this isn't to, to shrink down the jeans, but it is to get rid of all the nasty chemicals and starches that were added to the, to the yarn when the denim was being woven. The one wash process just takes away any of the necessity to get rid of these nasty chemicals. And the jeans are just easier to, to wear in. They're easier to break in. There's actually, there's no break in. I remember like, like back in the day, there was, it, it was a, a dick measuring contest to see who could break in the toughest denim. You, you weren't a man unless the back of your knees were bleeding from your 21 ounce, super skinny, unsamphorized selvage denim that you were attempting to wear. These days, nobody gives a fuck. Many guys coming into the world of selvage denim, they're opting for the one wash, they're even opting for washies. And if I'm honest, it doesn't really make very much difference. And it could even be, dare I say it, the smarter choice, the clever choice. Right, having said that, so the last couple of project pairs that you guys know about, so that's the TCB 50 Slim and the blue and green 801s. Both of those jeans are, are one wash jeans and I, I was a complete convert. Like I really, I loved how easy and comfortable the whole break-in process was. But then I started wearing a pair of 316s in their 220X denim and that's a raw samphorized denim. I started wearing those and, and I got a little bit, I got all nostalgic about it. Like, this is, this is how I started in this world of, of, of selvage denim, with a raw pair of jeans. And I missed that Christmas, I missed that, that sheen. And I missed that, that moment where you go from like, the jeans, like the, the break-in process to, to when they finally break in and you can feel the fades are just about to start. Okay, our fifth and final term that's most commonly associated with, with selvage denim. And that's 14 ounce, or or it could be 14.75 ounce, it could be 18 ounce, it could be, it could be anything between nine and, and 32 ounce when you get to the, the really dumb realm of selvage denim. You see, denim is measured in ounces per square yard. And so that, that can be abbreviated, you'll see it abbreviated to OZ or OZ with a full stop behind it. And yeah, the, the higher the, the weight of denim in ounces, the, the thicker the denim's gonna be. That just makes sense, right? And so a pair of 14 ounce denim jeans are made from a fabric that weighs 14 ounces per square yard. How heavy your jeans are is important because it influences 
how these genes are going to wear, how comfortable they're going to be on your body. And to a certain extent, it also influences the, the durability of the genes. Us denim heads tend to lump these into, into three categories. So 12 ounces and under, that's going to be lightweight. From 13 up till around about 15, 16, that's going to be midweight. And 16, 17 above, that's going to be heavyweight. The only thing that you've got to take into consideration here is this. If you, if you are new to salvage denim, then please stick to, stick to the midway, stick to the 13 up to the 15 ounces. This is going to be heavy and sturdy enough to get some sick fades, but it's also not going to be so heavy that it's going to be a pain in the arse to, to break in. A pain in the arse, literally. Those are the five terms that, that I most commonly associate with salvage denim. But, but I'd be curious to know if, if I missed anything out, if there's something you think is more important, or if there's something that, that you want me to go into a little bit more detail with, just, just let me know in the comments down below. Also, down in the description, there's the links to our social media and all of that other good stuff. And guys, that's, that's a really good way to stay in touch. There's also, so yeah, above the description, but below me, there's that subscribe button. Guys, if you're into salvage denim, if you're into raw denim, if you're into quality menswear in general. Well, that's what I'm doing with this channel. So if you consider hitting that subscribe button, then I hope you're, I hope you're not gonna regret it. Um, next to the subscribe button, there is the bell notification icon. So you're gonna get notified whenever I drop a new video. And yeah, if you have liked what's been going on here, then it'd be really, really appreciated if you give us one of those thumbs up that, that does really, it helps out the channel. I'm just wondering, this might be, what's the date today? Shit, it's the 23rd. Dates are meaningless to me at the moment. Anyway, this is definitely going to be the, the final vlog that I get out before Christmas. And so I would just like to wish all of you guys out there a very, very Merry Christmas. Weird times right now, but I hope you're surrounded by loved ones, family, friends, whatever. And I hope you're taking care of yourself. I hope you're taking care of the people around you. And I'm going to see you guys in the next vlog.